So, you want to build a home cinema? Okay, there's several ways to go about this, as we know. You can go to the shops, they'll sell you a bunch of gear, and then you have to try and sort of fit it into the room. But that's a bit like getting a square peg into a round hole and hoping for a great outcome. That doesn't always work out perfectly. Uh, this job that we're on is really interesting. Now I'll turn around and hopefully you can see a bit of the room behind me and some of the ceiling features. It's a beautiful home, it's been really nicely restored, but they want a cinema in it. Okay, so we have to deal with a room that's very hard and noisy, a room that has a lot of features in it. So behind me is a fireplace, there's an arch behind that or beside it. There's a window over here. Behind me are double glass doors and then there's some French doors that go to the outside over here and we need to get a screen up and we need to get speakers in and we need to get them behind the screen and we need to turn this into a decently working home cinema. How are we going to go about it? Okay, so let's talk about that. So what we've done on this wall, which is going to be the screen wall, is we've built three of our acoustic panels. They're going to hold three of the Megaphonics flat speakers from Crix, great speakers. And they, you can see the recesses for the speakers already, so two of the panels are up. The third panel will hang exactly over that door, and we've actually manufactured a skirting board that continues the look of the room, and that's going to be painted in. And so uh, that's removable. In fact, the whole front wall is going to be fully removable. You'll be able to lift off the screen, lift off the acoustic panels and the speakers, access the doors, do any cleaning or housekeeping, and put it all back if you want to. Right, so that's that section. And the screen will be suspended off the front of the, uh, the, the, um, the acoustic panels. So this makes a baffle wall, screen support, speaker housing, and everything. And it works really, really well. Okay, so with the Atmos speakers, we had to get those into this coffered ceiling. Um, there wasn't really an option to put in-ceiling speakers in, and a lot of those don't give us the angle that we want. So again, we've gone with the Crix um, Hyperphonics 45s. You can see two of them neatly nestled in the coffered ceiling there, right up against the, the uh, framework or the edge. Working really, really well, looking very neat, not a cable to be seen. And then I'll just tip down a bit. You can see two more there. Um, and they're fixed vertically, so they're straight down effectively onto the listening position. And then as I come around, you'll see the other two. And at the back of the room, there's this fireplace, and you can see them placed above the fireplace. Now, because of the length of the room and the throw ratio and the screen size and everything else, the seating position is pretty much fixed. And so all of these locations have been calculated. Now, the thing is, it's interesting, right? You know, I talk about what is our job. Our job is to creatively problem solve in difficult spaces. That's what we do, and we have to make the best cinema we can within the budget that we've got and get the best possible results. So, these two here, we had to work out how to get those in. Now, the Hyperphonics 45s work at uh, 180 degrees and 45 degrees, but they don't work at 90 degrees. So, we had to redesign the bracket for those and then fit them so that they sit neatly on the edge of the walls there. And then the cables actually come down the chimney and then out through the side of the chimney into the speakers. Uh, the chimney's not being used, okay. So, um, so that's how they're cabled. Everything obviously goes up into the roof. Now, cabling was a challenge as well. Also, installing everything, because the bricks in here are soft as butter, so actually getting things to anchor properly is a real task. The cables for the front speakers, they're currently on the ground. I don't know if you can see them there. Uh, somewhere there. And um, they weren't too bad to get down. But the ones for the side surrounds, the ones that came down over here, um, they actually came down this wall, then under the floor, all the way under the floor to here, then behind the skirting board, which is currently behind the screen. So we had to drill up behind the skirting board, come into the brickwork, and that will then enter the panel. So when this is finished, you're not going to see a cable anywhere, which is going to be great. Now, projector. We didn't really want to uh, put a ceiling mount projector in there, and we actually don't like ceiling mounts that much. So we've had a custom-made shelf um, prepared for us, and that's going to house the Sony projector that's going up there, and that's going to sit on the wall, and the projector will just sit on the shelf, and that's at the perfect distance for the screen size that we've selected, so you get the right throw ratio. So. Everything in this uh, place is removable and uh, everything sort of, uh, if you took everything out, you just have to patch a few holes in the walls and, and you would be done. So what we've done is we've taken a fairly difficult room 
and we have uh, managed the, um, the doors on the front, we've managed to work it round and in fact use the fireplace um, for cabling and then we've got two more acoustic panels that are going to go over these doors here um, and they are of course coated on both sides so they look decent from the glass side of the door, from the corridor side. And then the, uh, the rest of the equipment, uh, all the hardware, is going to be located in this rack here, uh, which you can see behind me. So there you go. That's, you can hear how echoey this room is, right? So this is an anteroom to, to the main lounge. So there you go. I just wanted to sort of go through with you, there's the uh, Hyperphonics 45 there. I wanted to go through with you some of the challenges that this room has presented and then we'll have some photos at the end. But getting a room like this right is really, really tricky. And so getting the sound right, getting the picture right, making everything fit, working around all of the issues in the room. I mean, one of the issues here, even at the front, was this architrave, right? So you've got this door here, beautiful door, um, but you've got this framework and architrave here. Well, we had to be able to hang the acoustic panels and still pass the architrave. So they've got a 33 mil standoff and then we've got a batten that goes across the door at the bottom and that standoff brings the framework forward so that it passes across all of the architrave and the architrave doesn't need to be removed. So we've sort of taken all of that into consideration and Peter, who makes our panels, has just done an astonishing job, as usual. Everything is millimetre accurate. These speakers will just push into here perfectly. Um, then they're secured and then cabled in. So there you go. Uh, this is our nice laser stand. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, it's a little, which we use a lot for aligning stuff up. So, so this is going to be a uh, 7.2.6 system, um, and yeah, we're we're really pleased with the way it's coming along. Uh, the the speakers in the ceiling just look absolutely trick. Um, so, yeah, it's taken a lot of work to get the cabling in. It's taken a lot of work to design the the panels and the layout and the speaker positions and work with the furniture but I, I think this is going to be a lot of fun and I think it's going to work really well and, I, and we've tried to do as much as we can to respect the design of the space as well uh, so you know very challenging when you've got an old home that's been restored you want to put a modern cinema in, an, in a sort of uh, more of a historic looking room that's difficult now at the moment the room is it's an off-white um, and the owners may or may not paint it at a later stage and they're aware of the you know the challenges of working with a, a room that has uh, lighter walls and, and that's just one of those choices that has to be made uh, I'm sure maybe later they might want to paint it I, I'm hoping that this room works really well or as well as we can possibly make it the way it is because I actually love the look of this room there you go so that's what our job's all about guys if you want a really great home cinema and you want it done properly and you want it engineered so that everything fits everything works all the cables are hidden that you work with the existing architecture and you work with the problems that you've got and you end up with a with a great solution then that's where our energy goes that's where the effort goes it's very different to you know getting a box of speakers out of a bunch of speakers out of a box and just standing them around a room this is all going to fit, it's all going to look in place, and it's all going to be really terrific.